This video is about the basics of operational amplifiers. So an ideal operational amplifier has two inputs, the inverting input, denoted by the minus sign, and the non-inverting input, identified by the plus sign. And it has an output. And the output is proportional to the difference between the non-inverting and inverting inputs. It's an active device, so that means it requires power to work, even though the power connections aren't usually shown. Here's what it looks like when the power connections are shown. We have a positive supply and a negative supply. So the rules about the supply. In a single supply op amp, the negative supply can be ground, and the output of an op amp can't go outside the supply voltages. In fact, with almost any electronic device you're going to find, that is the case, that the supply voltages are the limits of what you can get on the output. In fact, with an op amp, you can't usually get closer than a volt or two from each of the supplies. These voltage limits are also called the rails. Single supply op amps are an exception. You can usually get within a few millivolts of the negative supply on a single supply op amp, since in a negative, since in a single supply op amp, the negative supply can be ground. When an op amp hits output, hits one of the rails, the output is called saturated, or we can say the op amp is in saturation. So here's the equivalent circuit of an operational amplifier. There is a finite resistance between the two inputs, we have a voltage source, and some series resistance to the output. So, that internal, that input resistance is ideally approximately infinite. In fact, it's usually in the order of megohms or so for real op amps. The output resistance ideally is zero, but in fact it's on the order of, say, 100 ohms for real op amps. The voltage gain ideally would be infinite. In fact, it tends to be in the range of 10 to 100,000 for real op amps and the output voltage is given by the voltage gain times the difference between the non-inverting input and the inverting input. Normally, op amps are used with negative feedback. So it means that a portion of the output is fed back into the inverting input. Op amps are rarely used in the open loop configuration, which means without any feedback. The feedback factor is called beta and is a number between 0 and 1. It's the proportion of the output fed back into the input. And if it goes into the inverting input, it's called negative input. If it goes into the non-inverting input, it's called positive feedback. The input resistance when there is feedback is the input resistance times 1 plus beta times A, where A is the voltage gain. The output resistance with feedback is the original output resistance divided by 1 plus beta times A. So the gain is 1 over beta. In other words, the output depends only on the feedback, not on the op amp characteristics. You will virtually never use positive feedback in an op amp circuit. Note that all the circuits that follow use negative feedback. In other words, the feedback goes into the inverting input. So, without feedback, an op amp circuit is called in the open loop configuration. With feedback, it's called the closed loop configuration. The gain without feedback is called the open loop gain. The gain with feedback is called the closed loop gain. So, how to analyze op amp circuits with, closed, uh, with feedback? The there are three assumptions that are made. No, assumption, no current goes into the op-amp inputs. The inputs are virtually equal, which means the inputs are at the same voltage. The f and also, the frequency of the input signal doesn't matter. Now, these assumptions only hold if the output is not saturated. As soon as the outputs reach saturation, then those assumptions will no longer hold. So if the output is not at either of the rails, then those assumptions hold. If the output is at one of the rails, then the, that, those assumptions do not hold. So instead of thinking of the device as an amplifier, 
you can think of the purpose of the device as to keep the inputs equal, which again is the case with closed loop negative feedback circuits. So the most simple circuit is a buffer or a voltage follower. So you have an input voltage, an output voltage, and the output is tied directly into the inverting input. Since the two inputs are equal, then that means that the voltage here is the same as the voltage here, so the voltage at the non-inverting input and the vo inverting input are equal. But since the voltage at the inverting input is, is tied to the voltage at the output, then the voltage at the output equals the voltage at the inverting input. So therefore, the output voltage equals the input voltage. Here's what it looks like in simulation. So here you can see the input signal at the top, which goes between 4 volts and 6 volts, and on the bottom you see the input goes, the output goes from 4 volts to 6 volts, and it is in phase, and so on. Now, if we increase the amplitude, we can see the effect of the rails. So here we see, now at the positive supply is set to be 12 volts. Our input signal goes up to 12 volts, but you'll notice that our output signal is actually getting chopped off at a little less than 12 volts, probably around 11 volts or so. Here's what it looks like a little closer up. So here we can see it actually works out to be at about 11.1 .1 volts is where we're hitting the positive rail. Here we can see the negative rail. So again, we see the positive voltage is okay, but the negative voltage we see it getting clipped off at about minus 11.1 .1 volts. So, this is the inverting amplifier, and many op-amp circuits are based on this. So the non-inverting input is set to ground, the feedback equations look like this, so it turns out that the output is minus RF over RI times V in. So, op amp circuit input resistance. Even though the input resistance of an op amp is very large, the input resistance of an op amp circuit may not be. So here we have a buffer or a voltage follower. No current goes in. Since the signal goes directly into an op amp input, then the input resistance is very large. For a circuit like the inverting amplifier, however, the input signal doesn't go directly into the op-amp input. We see here the signal goes through this resistor into the input. Since the voltage at these two points is equal, then effectively the circuit looks like this, where the input voltage goes through this resistance to ground. So that means the effective input resistance is just the input resistor Ri.